So today we'll be starting with ratios and proportions and my name is Muhammad Rafi Suhail. So let's start with the first question. Now before starting uh, with the first question, I need to explain you something. You know, for example, when we talk about odds, let's suppose there's a, there's a race. Now there's, there's a horse, let's suppose horse one that wins four times and lose, loses one time. So the, so the odd of winning is four is to one. So this is the odd. And the probab probability for the winning would be four over five because the total number of races this horse has uh, been running is five. So the probability of winning would be four upon five. So this is the basic concept. Um, now let's do the first question. Now, if three fourths of employees in a supermarket are not college students, so not college students, we have 0.75. What is the ratio of the number of college graduates? So college graduates would be 0.25 if, because the total number should be one. So three fourths of the employees in a supermarket are not college. So the number of, uh, number of uh, workers or employees which are graduate would be 0.25. Now, what is the ratio of the number of uh, college students to the to those who are not college students? So, not college students. So, college students 0.25 is to 0 0.75, and we have one by three. So, this is the right option. Now, let's move on to the second question. Now, a over 9 equals to 10 over 2a. Now, what is the value of a square? So, we have a over 9 equals to 10 over 2a. Now, if we bring a to the right uh, left side, so this would become, this would, this would become a square equals to 10 multiplied by 9 divided by 2 and we bring this 9 over on the right side. So, if 9 is in the denominator over here, over on the right side, it will be on your numerator. So 2 1s are, 2 5s are, 5 9s are, 45. So the correct answer would be option D. Now if 80% of the applicants to a program were rejected, so if there were 100 applicants, 80 of them were re rejected, so 20 would be accepted. What is the ratio of the numbers accepted to the numbers rejected? So this would be 20 over 80 to ones are to fours are. So the correct answer would be one by four. Now Scott can read 50 pages per hour. So pages, hour, so 50 pages in uh, 60 minutes. We can say that in one hour we have 60 minutes. At this rate, how many pages can he read in 50 minutes? So how many pages this person can read in 50 minutes? So X would be equal to 50. Now we're going to cross multiply 50 minutes into 50 divided by 60. So zero, zero cancel. So we have five over six. Five into 50 is 250 divided by six. And if we divide 250 divided by six, six fours are 24 and um, 1, 10, 6, 1s are 6, and we are left with the remainder is 4, so we can say 41, 4 by 6. We can further simplify this. This would 2, uh, 2, 2s are 4, 2, 3s are 6. So the correct answer would be 41, 2 by 3. Now, if all the members of a team are juniors or seniors, so we have either juniors or seniors. And if the ratio of juniors to senior seniors on the team is three by five. Now, what is the percent of the team members are seniors? Now we are talking about percent now. So we need to know the total students. So the total number of students would be eight. So if three by five is the ratio of juniors to seniors. So technically it means that we have total number of students. We have eight. Now, obviously, eight is not the exact number, but in this perspective, we are saying that the total number of students would be eight. Now, what is the percent of team members are seniors? So 
we have five seniors divided by eight and what will be this um, so we need to find out the person so let's multiply this by 100 so four twos are four twenty fives are two ones are twelve point five if you multiply 12.5 by 5, so 5 twelves are 60.5 into 5 is 2.5. So 62.5% would be the right answer. So the measure of the three angles in a triangle are in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 2. So we have this triangle. Now let's suppose this angle is x, this angle is x, and this angle is 2x because the ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 2 which of the following statement must be true now one thing for sure it's an isosceles triangle why because we have two angles which are equal so these two sides are equal and if we try to find out the angle so in a triangle the total number of angles we have equals to 180 so x plus x plus 2x equals to 180 so x we have 4x equals to 180 x equals to 180 divided by 4, 2 twos are, 2 90s are, 2 ones are, 2 45s are. So, one, this angle is 45, this angle is 45, so 45 plus 45 is 90. So, this angle must be 90 degrees. So, total angle, total angles in a triangle equals to 180. So, 45 plus 45 plus 90 equals to 180. So we can say that the triangle is isosceles. Yes, the triangle is a right angle triangle. Now the property of a right triangle, uh, a triangle is that there's one angle that is of 90 degrees. The triangle is equilateral. No, the triangle is not equilateral because in an equilateral triangle, all angles are equal. Now over here, obviously this angle is double uh, the size of these two angles. So option A and B are correct. Now, what is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its radius? So, circumference is the uh, ratio to the radius. Now, the formula for circumference is 2 pi r. So, we can say 2 pi r divided by r. And we get a ratio 2 pi is to 1. Or we can just write 2 pi. So, the correct answer would be option E. Now, the ratio of the numbers of freshmen to sophomores to juniors to seniors uh, on a college basketball team. So, we have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and then we have seniors. So, we have 4, 7, 6, 8. So, this is the ratio. Now, what percent of the team are sophomores? So, let's first find out the total number of students. So, the total number of students, we just add all of them up. 4 plus 7 is 11. 11 plus 6 is 17. 17 plus 8 is 25. So we have 25 students. And we need to find out the percent of sophomore. So sophomore, 7 divided by 25. And because we need to find out the percent, we are multiplying it by 100. So 25 ones are, 25 fours are, 7 fours are, 28 percent. Option D is correct. Now, at Central State College, the ratio of the numbers of students taking Spanish to the number of taking French. So, Spanish is to French. We have this 7 is to 2. Now, if 140 students are taking French, now let's suppose X equals to total number of students. Uh, so, X over here, we can say... So X is the total number of students. So we can say if in, in, in percentage, in percentage, 2 by 9 into X should equal to 140. So if 140, if X is the total number of students, and this would be the percentage, this would be the proportion of students which are taking French. Because if we look into this uh, ratio, we can say that the total number of students fr from the ratio perspective is 9. So 2 by 9 would be the number of students in proportion which are taking French. So x equals to 140 into 9 divided by 2. So 70 into 9 would be 630. 9, 7, the six, uh, 63. So now we have this x which means that the total number of students in this college 
equals to 630. I need to find out how many are taking Spanish. So the proportion of Spanish, 7 by 9 into 630. Now 9 sevens are 63, so 79, because 630 divided by 9 is 70. 70 into 7 would be 490 students. Now A is to B is 3 by 5, A is to C is 5 by 7. Now what is the value of B is to C? Now B is to C, we can write B over A multiplied by A over C. So A and A would cancel out and we will be left with B over C. Now if A over A is to B is 3.5, B over A or B is to A would be 5 over 3. So if A is to B is 3 by 5, B is to A would be 5 by 3. Multiply by A is to C is 5 by 7. So B is to C would be 25 over 21. So hence option D would be correct. Now, if x is a positive number, then what will be your x? So x over 3 equals to 12 over x. So if we cross multiply, this would become x squared equals to 36. Now, x equals to under root 36. We know that 6 multiplied by 6 equals to 36. So x should be equal to plus minus 6. But we, all, we, we also know that the number is positive. So option C would be correct. Now in a diagram below, B is to A is 7 is to 2. Now in a straight line, again, how many degrees we have in a straight line? We have 180 degrees. So if you want to find out this B, so we have 7 is to 2. This is B is to A. Now the total number of degrees equals to 180. Now from over here, if I want to find out this B angle, so this would be B, uh, this would be 7 by 9 into 180. Now what is this 9? This 9 indicates that the total number. So 7 is to 2. So we can say that 9 over here represents 180 degree. So this is your proportion of B. So the proportion of B is 7 is to 9. So 9 ones are 9, 20 is a 20 into 7 is 140. So B is 140 and A is 40. Now B minus A would be what? 140 minus 40 equals to 100. So 140 minus 40 equals to 100. Now as a snail can move I inch in M minutes. So at this rate, how many feet can it move in 60 in H hours? Now, H hours, so in one hour we have 60 minutes. In H hour, we will be having 60 H minutes. For example, if we have two hours, now how many minutes would be in two hours? So two into 60 would be 120. So if H was 2, 16 to 2 would be 120. So we now know that the total number of minutes we have is six, uh, 60 H. So 60 H we have uh, minutes. So how many, how many inches that we can travel in 60 H uh, minutes? So we just need to cross multiply. And I'll just going to give you an intuition as well. For example, if you in 2 minutes, you travel 1 inch. In 60 minutes, how many inches you can travel? So 60 divided by 2, that is 30 inch. If in 2 minutes you are traveling 1 inch, so in 60 minutes you will be traveling 30 inch. So over here, just look carefully that 2 is your minutes. 2 is your minutes. So 60 H I divided by M. And over here again, M is your minutes. So this is your total number of inch that you can travel. And we also know that 12 inches equals to one feet. So we need to find out how many feet we can travel. So we need to divide this. So in order to find out feet now, so 60 H I divided by 12 M. So 12 ones are 12, 12 fives are 60. 
So feet would be 5HI divided by M. Now, Gilda can, uh, can grade T test in 1 upon X hours. At this rate, how many tests can she grade in X hours? So let's suppose the number of tests you can grade equals to Y. And she wants how many tests you can grade in X hours. So how much would that Y would be? So we just cross multiply. So we get TX equals to Y over X. So Y equals to TX squared. Option B is correct. Now we can just use another uh, term as well. So let's suppose um, um, let's suppose I'm, I'm I'm giving a separate example. So let's suppose you can test uh, you can check uh, ten tests in uh, let's suppose one hour or two hours. So how many tests you can, how many uh, uh, papers you can check in four hours. So we, obviously if we can check 10 tests in two hours in four hours we can check 20 tests. So we can check if the cross multiply works or not. So four, 10 into four divided by two. So two two, the two into 10 is 20. So this is the logic behind this cross multiplic multiplication. Now a club had three boys and five girls. Now during a membership drive, the number of boys of uh, the number of boys and girls joined the club. How many members does the club have now if the ratio of boys to girls is three is to four. So over here the uh, the most important information is during a membership drive, the same number of boys and girls join. Now let's suppose it's X. So now we have three plus X boys and five plus X girls. And the ratio of boys to girls is three by four. So if you cross multiply four threes are 12 plus four X equals to 15 plus three X. So 4x minus 3x equals to 15 minus 12x equals to 3. So x is 3. So in, originally we had um, 3 boys. Now we add, need to add 3 more. So it becomes 6. And we had 5 girls and add 3 more and it becomes 8. So 6 plus 8 equals to 14. So this is your total number of uh, boys and girls in the club. So the correct option would be B. Now 3x minus 1 over 25 equals to x plus 5 equals to 1. What's the value of x? So 3x minus 1 over 25 equals to x plus 5 over 11. Again, cross multiply. So 11 into 3 is 3, 33x minus 11 equals to 25x plus. Now 25 into 5 equals to 125. Now 33x minus 25x equals to 125 minus 11. Now 33 minus 25x is 8x. Now 125 minus 11 would be how much? 114. Now if you just divide this. So uh, there's a mistake. So if 11 goes over there, it doesn't become minus. It becomes positive. So 125 plus 11 would actually be 136. So this is incorrect. So 136 divided by 8. So 136 divided by 8 would be how much? It would be 17. So 8 ones are 8. 13 minus 8 would be 5. 7 fives are 56. So the correct option would be D. Now, if boys can shovel a driveway in two hours, so four boys takes two hours to come up with this driveway. Now, how many man hours they work? So, how many man hours they are working? So, if each boy is working two hours, 
so the total number of man hours would be or over here boy hour would be 8 8 hours so how many minutes they are in 8 hours so 8 multiplied by 60 so 6 eights are 48 so we have 480 minutes so four boys take 480 minutes uh, so the total number of man hours uh, is equal to 480 minutes so each boy is taking 120 minutes now the total combined number of minutes would be 480 minutes now how many minutes will it take five boys to, the, to do the job so if four students were taking uh, the total man hour were 480 minutes or eight hours so how many um, how many minutes will it take five boys to do the job so 480 divided by five so five nines are 45 five nines are 45 we are left with three five six are 30. so the total number of minutes uh, it will going to take for five boys to do the job now 96 minutes if we multiply this by five again the answer would be 480. So this 480 is a crucial number because it tells you the total number of minutes combined. So for example, if there is one person doing this job, so the one person will going to take 480 minutes to do the whole thing or eight hours. Now if 500 pounds of mush will feed 20 pigs for a week, for how many days will 200 pounds of mush feed 14 pigs? Now let's find out how much does the pig eat in one day. So in one day, how much one, one pig eats? So 500 pounds. So in one week, 500 pounds is distributed into 20 pigs. So each pig in seven days eats 25. 25 mush so 25 mush uh, is eaten in seven days so in one day one pig eats how much 25 divided by seven now over here we have how many pigs so in one day 14 pigs how much 14 pigs will eat in one day so 25 divided by seven into 14 seven ones are seven two that's 50 and how many pounds do we have? We have 200 pounds. So if 14 pigs eats 50 in one day, so in 200, if we have 200 pounds, so 14 pigs will take four days to complete, uh, to uh, four days to eat the whole 200 pounds of mush. Now let's, uh, now we need to find out either quantity is equal, greater, less, or we can't, uh, determine which quantity is greater or equal or less now the ratio of red to blue marbles in a jar was 3 is to 5 so red to blue is 3 is to 5 the same number of red and blue marbles were added to the jar so 3 by 5 is also 0. 0.6 so same number of uh, red and blue marbles were added to the jar so 3 plus x and 5 plus x now this is a very this is a very important concept now let's suppose x is 1 so now 3 by 5 would actually be 4 by 6 3 by 5 is 0. 0.6 and 4 by 6 would be how much 2 by 3 now 2 by 3 is 66.67 percent or 0. 0.667 now one thing for sure that even if we add one marble it will be great this new ratio would be greater than 0. 0.6 now let's suppose we add 95 marbles so this would be 95 plus 3 divided by 95 plus 5. So this would be 98 divided by 100 or 0.98. So we are traveling from 0.67 to 0.98. And each time, each time, whenever we add new marbles, which are of equal quantity, so your ratio actually goes up. So option A would be correct. Now, no matter what happens, the ratio of red to blue marbles now would be greater than 0. 0.6. And the basic rationale is that if initially it was 3 by 5, now the percentage change in your numerator is, will be higher than the percentage change in your denominator. Why? Because the base of the numerator is lower. 
So that is the reason the percentage change in the numerator will be higher than the denominator. Hence, the ratio will always be higher. If we keep on adding, uh, same number of red and blue marbles. Now, so over here, quantity A is greater than quantity B. So option A is correct. Three associates agreed to split the $3,000 profit of an investment in the ratio. So the difference between the largest and the smallest share. So let's suppose the total would be 2 plus 5 plus 8, that is 15. So 15 over here represents 3,000. So the largest share would be uh, 8 into 3,000 divided by 15. And the smallest share would be 2 into 3,000 divided by 15. So uh, 3000 divided by 15 would be how much? 3000 divided by 15 is 200. So we can we can say this 3 fives are 3 thousands are 5 ones are 200. So we need to find out the difference. So 8 into 200 is 1600. And this will also be 200. So 2 into 200 would be 400. 1600 minus 400 equals to 1200. So quantity A is equal to quantity B. Hence option C is correct. Now the ratio of number of boys to girls in a chess club is 5 is to 2. So in chess club, boys and girls is 5 is to 2. And the ratio of the number of boys to girls in the glee club is 11 is to 4. Now, the number of boys in the chess club and the number of boys in the glee club. Now, you can easily mis uh, do a mistake and say that the number of boys in glee club uh, are more because obviously the ratio is higher. 11 is to 4 and over here is 5 is to 2. But that's incorrect. Because we also need to check what's the total number of uh, students. Uh, combining boys and girls. So let's suppose in chess club there are 14 students. So total number of boys would be how much? 5 over 7 into 14. And why am I taking it 7? Because 7 indicates the total number of students. So 7 ones are 7 twos are and, the, and 5 over 7 is your proportion of boys. So it is 10. Now let's suppose the number of students were 140. So 5 over 7 into 140. So 7 ones are 7 twos are uh, and obviously 0 and 0. So 140 divided by 7 is 20. 5 into 20 is 100. So we can either have 10 students or 100 students. If we talk about uh, Glee Club, so 11 over 15. And we can have, let's suppose, uh, 15 students. If you have 15 students, we have 11 boys. If you have 150 students, we have 110 boys. So again, we cannot be sure which uh, number is higher and which number is lower. Maybe in Glee Club, we, there are only 15 students. So we are unsure which quantity is higher or lower. Now, Sally invited the same number of boys and girls to her party. So boys and girls, they were same number. Everyone who was invited came, but five additional boys showed up. And that's uh, usually the case. So X plus five is to X. This caused the ratio of girls to boys. So the ratio of girls to boys at the party to be 4 is to 5. So the ratio is so x over x plus 5 equals to 4 by 5. So 5x, we again cross multiply. 5x equals to 4x plus 5. So x equals to 5. So the number of people she invited to her party So the number of people she invited to her party, let's check uh, x over x plus 5, 4 is to 5. Hmm. So there must be a mistake over here. Let's do this again. So x plus 5 multiplied by 4 is 4x plus 20. Obviously, I made a mistake. 
So 5x minus 4x is x equals to 20. So originally we had 20 boys and 20 girls. So the number of people she actually invited were 40. So 40 equals to 40. So option C is correct. Now a large, a large jar is full of marbles. When a single marble is drawn at a random from the jar, the probability that it is red is 3 over 7. So it means there are 3 red marbles and 7 total number of marbles. So we have 4 non-red marbles. Because this is the probability. So the probability 3 by 7 means that if we have total 7 marbles, so 3 of them would be red. Now the ratio of number of red marbles to the non-red marbles. So we know that we have 3 red marbles and 4 non-red marbles. So the ratio would be 3 is to 4. That is 0.75. And 1 over 2 is 0.5. So definitely 0.75 is greater than 0.5. So option A is correct. Now 3A equals to 2B and 3B equals to 5C. And what will be the ratio of A is to C? Now first let's find out A. A would be 2B over 3 and C would be 3B over 5. So A divided by C would be 2B over 3 divided by 3B over 5. So 2B over 3 multiplied by 5 uh, whole over 3B. So B and B cancels out and we get 2 over 3. 2 over 9. Now definitely two over, uh, we get 10 over 9, I'm, I'm my mistake. So 2 into 5 is 10 and 3 3 is 9. So 10 divided by 9 is definitely more than 1. It is definitely more than 1. So 10 divided by 9 is a number that is more than 1. And hence option A is correct. That quantity A is greater than 1. Now the radius of a circle 2 is so three times the radius of circle one. So let's suppose circle one has a radius of x. Circle two will be having a ra uh, radius of three x. So area of circle two. So area of circle two divided by area of circle one. So the area formula is pi r square. So circle two we have radius of three x. So pi into 9x square. So 3x square, if you square it, we get 9x square. And area uh, of circle 1 would be pi r square. And over here, we have r of x. So we have pi x square. So pi pi cancels and x square, x square cancels. So this number should be 9. Now 3 pi, so pi is basically 3.142. Uh, so 3.142 multiplied by 3 is definitely a number that is more than 9. So 3, 3 is a 9 and we additionally we have 0.14. So option B would be correct that quantity B is greater than quantity A. Now in the last again, so practice, practice, practice. So you need to do a lot of practice in order to get a perfect score. That's it. Uh, thank you.